Welcome to the We're Scriptures podcast. My name is Dion Cameron and I'm your host and I'm so happy that you could join with me for today's episode. The purpose of the We're Scriptures podcast is to strengthen us, the body of Christ, in our faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more we hear the word of God, the more we read it, the more our faith is strengthened. At least once a month, I also try to do an evangelistic message to fulfill the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus encourages us to fulfill the Great Commission. It reads, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them, his disciples, and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so today's episode of the Word Scriptures podcast is an evangelistic message designed to fulfill the Great Commission. My topic is... Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. There was once this commander of the army of Syria. His name was Naaman. Naaman was a very good commander and he was held in great esteem and in great favor. However, he had leprosy or Hansen's disease Hansen's disease is a chronic, curable, infectious disease, mainly causing skin lesions and nerve damage. However, in Naaman's day, at the time where he lived, when he lived, there was no cure for leprosy. And Naaman had no hope of being healed. Now, bands of raiders from Syria, or Aram as it was called at that time, captured a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife as her maidservant. The Israelite slave girl, she knew of the, the miraculous power of the God of Israel, so she told her mistress of Elijah, God's prophet. Let's read the story. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. It reads, now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there's a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. 
Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. At first, Naaman refused to believe and obey God's word and his instructions given through the prophet Elijah. He was offended at God's word. Yes, he had leprosy and he wanted to be healed. However, at first he hardened his heart. His pride and unbelief almost prevented him from receiving his miraculous healing and deliverance. God used his servants to speak sense into him. And Naaman then humbled himself and obeyed God's instructions. And he dipped himself in the Jordan River seven times as Elisha had told him. And the scripture says his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Obedience always brings the blessing. Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts. All of us human beings have a spiritual condition called the sinful nature that requires a spiritual cleansing just like Naaman. And God has given us specific instructions in his word on how to get rid of it and be cleansed and healed. You see, we were all born in sin. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, Naaman most likely contracted his leprous condition by breathing in the droplets containing the bacteria that causes leprosy. However, we all contracted our sinful nature from our foreparents, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned against God and passed on their sinful nature, their sinful condition to us. However, God, our Heavenly Father, made a way for us to be cleansed of our spiritual condition. And just like how God told Naaman to go dip in the Jordan seven times to get healed, God has given us specific directions on how to get rid of our sinful condition and be healed. In John chapter 3, God tells us that we must be born again or born from above in order to enter the kingdom of God and to be cleansed of our sins and receive God's holy spiritual nature. Now, how do we get born again or how do we get born from above? Well, first we have to acknowledge that we are sinners in need of a savior in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only Savior who can save us from our sins. Jesus was without sin and he gave up his life at the cross and shed his precious blood so that we can be cleansed from our sins. Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So Jesus shed his precious blood for us so that we can be cleansed of our sinful spiritual condition. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, verse 6, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 18, 
Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only Savior. John 14, 6, in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other Savior in the earth except Jesus. There is no other way that a man can be reconciled to God without receiving Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Acts 16 verse 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household, and you shall be saved. And Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Verse 11, as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. These are the specific instructions that God has given to us, his creation, in order for us to be cleansed from our sins and be reconciled to him. First, we have to acknowledge that we are sinners in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ, believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Just like how God gave Naaman the specific instructions to dip in the river Jordan seven times to be cleansed, God has given us specific instructions on how to be cleansed of our sinful condition. Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. Now, when a person receives God's instructions or hear the gospel, he or she has three choices. The first one is to say yes and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. The second choice is to say no. And the third is to say later. Later, I'll receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Here is a true story. Reinhard Bonnke, he's a famous evangelist. He went on to be with the Lord uh, over two years ago. He told this story. He was preaching in Europe, and at the end of the service, everyone is at the back of the church, and they're fellowshipping. And he hears this young woman crying, so he goes over to her and asks her what's wrong. And she said to him, Pastor, I believe every word that you have just preached. However, I can't receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I live with my boyfriend and he wouldn't want me to receive Jesus Christ. Reinhard Bonnke said he begged, he pleaded with her to receive Jesus Christ. However, she refused. The next day he's having breakfast at the house that he's staying at and the owner of the house, the woman, she runs in and she says, guess who died last night in a car accident? And sure enough, it was the woman who Reinhard Bonnke had pleaded with to receive Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. All of us are just one heartbeat away from eternity. If you are ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Please come into my heart and help me to live for you from now on and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You are now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. 
Ask your Heavenly Father to lead you to a church fellowship where you can grow with the family of God. Shalom. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If these podcasts have blessed you, please consider donating at www.paypal.me slash scriptures or donate on our website. Your donations help us to spread the gospel. Also, please share this titled episode with anyone who needs to hear the gospel. You can find where scriptures were on social media, and we invite you to visit our store, wherescriptures.com, where you can purchase Christian clothing, Christian art, puzzles, etc. Strengthen your faith, where scriptures. <music>